These are the main tools that I use for keeping my covering looking as good as I can. There's nothing fancy about any of them, but they all work well for what they're designed for. Once we start flying our planes, we're going to have to start cleaning the covering up. I've tried all kinds of concoctions and over-the-counter stuff, and I keep coming back to Simple Green. I buy it in a gallon jug, but then reduce it by about 50% with water into the spray bottle. And that seems to handle all my cleaning needs very well. I start cleaning with the planes upside down because the bottom's going to be the dirtiest anyway. This way I can get rid of the major mess first and prevent tracking that onto the rest of the airplane. The underside of the horizontal stabilizer and elevators catch a lot of the gunk, so they often have to be cleaned twice to make sure I get it all gone. While I'm cleaning the plane, I watch out for loose edges on the covering, and here's one on the horizontal stabilizer. I clean up loose covering like this with plain alcohol and do it three or four times to make sure I get rid of all the oil and grease. To fix this, I'll use my heat iron set to a little bit over half of its heat capacity. With the sock on it, I just roll that covering back down and seal it back down where it used to be. I'll work along that edge a little bit too, just in case some of the covering farther back was beginning to loosen up. Something I've started to do is to treat areas like this with this top flight trim solvent. This is made for applying graphics made out of covering, but I like to just put some on a paper towel and soak that edge real good. So far, all of the edges I've done this to haven't come back up again. The trim iron with its little shoe is good for getting down into hinge lines and that when we have pieces of covering coming loose in there. The covering iron does most of the heavy work for sticking the covering down, getting it attached to the wood, and applying some graphics. The important thing with this iron is to remember that we need it set just a little bit over halfway for applying film. The adhesive on our coverings is activated by much lower heat than it takes to shrink it. On a new plane like this Valiant, I go over all the graphics and covering with my heat iron to make sure that it's all sealed down and that all the edges are tight. I don't even pay attention to the wrinkles in the covering. We'll get rid of that later with the heat gun. Notice how I start at the other edge and use the heat gun to cross the piece, so I'm shrinking the covering all the way across. When I shrink that entire section down, it's much harder for those wrinkles to come back sitting in the sunlight. Sometimes the covering will puff up a little bit in between the bays on a structure like the horizontal stabilizer or elevators. Most of the covering companies say to just poke a hole in the bottom of the surface with a pin to let the air out. I'll try shrinking it down and letting it cool first to see if that pillow effect goes away. If it doesn't, then I'll go back and poke a hole and re-shrink it. When I'm satisfied that the covering's all stuck down and tight, I get out my wax. Incidentally, I swiped this wax idea from the guys at Extreme Flight. A good coat of this wax not only shines the plane up, but it seems to protect all the seams and edges of the covering and graphics. Since I've started using this wax, I've had way less problem with the covering or stickers lifting up at the edges. That means my planes keep looking better and there's less work keeping them that way. And I like both of those plans.